Hello there everybody, it is great to see you lovely people back again for some more bread making. Now I do hope that you had a go at last time's bread making and that it went really well and you enjoyed eating it. And as I said before about bread, there are hundreds of different sorts of breads from around the world. Balon Ekmek, that was the one I'd forgotten the name of from Turkey which pops up really big and then you've got breads like we made that puff up or expand a little bit and then there are flatbreads, breads that are very flat a bit like pita bread and they don't expand or puff up okay because they don't have that yeast in them and today that is what we're going to make we're going to make one of the flatbreads and it is the chapati all right so hop into your apron yeah make sure your hair is tied back get those hands clean and the table as well and let's jump right in to bread making so here we go today it's really quick super simple um you just need something like a frying pan okay you need something like a rolling pin any old knife as long as it's not a sharp knife mixing bowl ordinary plain flour okay now it needs to be the plain flour um, because we don't want this to rise up all right if you get self-raising flour then it's got something in it a bit like yeast that makes it rise up and go puffy we don't want that plain flour and then water it doesn't really matter how much of each you have because it's one of those recipes where you just kind of make up as much as you want which makes it super simple so let's just make some space put those things to one side because we don't need them so just put some flour into the bowl all right up to you the more chapatis you want to make the more flour you use the fewer chapatis the less flour i'm not going to make too many up here just a small number to make it quick and once it's in the bowl make a little dip in the middle and this is one of the reasons that I love this recipe making chapatis you literally if you just want to make two or three chapatis you just make two or three if you want to make chapatis for the whole family and you're needing 30 or 40 you just make more and it's so simple you put a flour in the bowl you dribble in a little bit of water just a little bit at a time and mix and what you do is just like last time you mix it up to make a dough all right so mix it up until it starts to clump or stick together now i can tell already that in actual fact i've got a lot of flour still in there so i'm going to put in a bit more water and so this is why i love this it's not an exact Science where you need perfectly in some some cooking you need to measure everything yeah you need to get the scales out but not with this recipe this is I call it an approximate you need about the right amount now can you see that's made a ball yeah it's all sticky and it's sticking together perfect that is the start of our dough and just like before don't need the water anymore so I'll move that over I'm going to put a little bit of flour on my table remember not too much but we just need a little to stop oh, that's a bit much miss right doesn't matter though that's just to stop the um, dough from sticking to the table so a little bit of flour on the table on my hands is useful because this looks a little bit sticky if it really has gone a bit too sticky you can always add a little bit more flour in the bowl okay there we go I'm going to just drop that out onto the table Boink like that bit of flour on my hands and can you guess what i'm going to do i'm making bread <laughs> that's right i'm going to knead it so i'm going to pull it away push it into the middle pull it away push it into the middle mine's a bit sticky that's fine just it will pick up the flour on the table and it will slowly get less sticky i'll just keep putting flour on my fingers and like i said this is just such a great recipe because it is i'd call it foolproof in other words you really can't go too far wrong you can always save the day 
and if it seems to be not quite right you can either add a little bit more water or a little bit more flour and it always turns out fab. So we just need, so push it away, push it down, either with your fingers if you've got a small amount like me, if you've got a great big lump like I sometimes do for the whole of my family when they come round, then you'd obviously use your knuckles because you'd have far more. Okay, but this is fine. And we're just mixing it. We're mixing it to make sure that the water is fully mixed in and that the flour is fully mixed in. We don't want to be biting in to one of our chapatis and find a lump of flour, okay? That would not be nice. And it is possible to do that. It is possible to do that. I've done it when I've been rushing and I haven't done enough kneading. So we knead it and knead it until it becomes smoother on the outside. So the smoother it is on the outside, the better it will be. So you just keep going round and round until it's really smooth on the outside. Now mine is taking a little bit of time because it was a little bit sticky to start with, but that's okay. When you think you've done enough kneading, which normally I would do about five minutes, that's about the right time, I think, to make sure it's all nicely mixed up and smooth. When you've done the right amount of kneading, we're going to cut this into pieces, all right? Again, it doesn't matter how big your pieces are. It just means that we can make a chapati of any size we want, all right? So one of these flatbreads called chapati will be the size that we fancy. So that will do. Okay, for our demonstration, I've got it ready, it's sorted. I'm going to keep the flour there. I'm going to put my dough just there, like that. And now I will need my rolling pin, all right? Do not worry if you do not have a rolling pin. You can use other things instead. So you could use a bottle on its side. Yeah, of any sort or kind. When we were kids, we used to sometimes use milk bottles. Obviously, you must have your grown-ups with you if you're using glass. But any sort of a bottle on its side can be used. And in actual fact, my friends who make chapatis a lot, um, traditionally, you would have a round board, a round piece of wood with a very thin, long stick, right? A very thin, long cylindrical, we call it stick. In other words, like that, but much thinner and longer. And they would use that to roll their chapatis on. All right. But you don't need one of those. That's traditional, but you don't need it as long as you've got a flat surface. OK. And something like a rolling pin, some sort of a cylinder, then you can go ahead and make a chapati. So I'm going to cut a piece off my dough here. And again, if your knife's a bit sticky, there we go small dog bowl and I'll do a little bit more kneading to get it into a nice circular shape and I'm wanting a circular shape because a chapati is circular yeah it's a circle shape can you think of anything else that some people might have been eating recently that was a thin flat circle shape yeah do you remember I'm a circle, I'm a circle, I've got one side, I've got one side, curving all around, curving all around, I'm a circle. Do you remember that song? Yeah? What have people been eating that's been a thin, flat, round circle? They've used a frying pan. That's right, pancakes. We've just had pancake day, haven't we? And that's the similar sort of thing. So there's my circle, nearly. I'm going to make sure there's lots of flour. Put it there, squish it a bit. I'm going to put some flour on my rolling pin so that it doesn't stick. And I'm just going to roll it. And every time I've rolled it a few times, I shift it round, making sure it's got flour underneath. As you can see, it's slightly sticking to my rolling pin, so a bit more flour on my rolling pin. And I roll it out until it makes a nice, thin, flat circle. Now, I say circle. I'm not very good at doing circles. 
Oh dear, my chapatis are often very funny shapes, but if you can make it a circle, that's wonderful, because they should really be circle shape. But if you can't make it a perfect circle, don't worry about it. Oh, 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 I got stuck on the table there. I need a little bit more flour. Here we go. We don't want to get stuck. There we go. And just remember, keep on putting flour on your rolling pin. So you move it round so it doesn't get stuck. Oh, this raised rolling pin needs more flour. Here we go. And I'm also, you can flop it over. So the side that's getting stuck goes onto the table, onto the flour on the table. And when you get a nice thin layer, oh, Miss Ray, nearly got stuck on the table there. When you get it into a nice thin layer that's the same thickness all the way around, doesn't have to be a circle, that is what you want. Can you see how thin that is? Yeah, very thin very floppy oh, some of you when i do that does that remind you of something you might have seen on a film some other dough yeah pizza dough yeah when people make, make pizzas you see them sometimes flopping it around on their hands the professionals who do it all the time put that to one side again make sure there's flour so that it doesn't stick and then you can do your others i'm going to get on with these and make my next ones and I'm going to put them to one side to just rest while I'm getting on with these. And then you are going to join me later for cooking these. So I'll sort this out. You go and sort yourself out and I'll see you soon. OK, we're just going to hold it for a little moment and we're just going to have a quick think about where chapatis came from, because they weren't invented in this country. They come from another country. And I was wondering, do you know which country that is? I think some of you will. That's right, India. They came from India and I'm going to show you on the world map. Here's the world map where India is, just in case you haven't seen. So on the world map, all of this blue is water. It's the seas. OK, and we in the UK are just up here, this little red bit. It's most likely actually smaller than that, but uh, to make sure we can see ourselves, we've made it bigger. And we've got, oh, we've got the United States, America, South America, Africa, Saudi Arabia, and Australia over here, and China and Thailand. And here is India, India and Pakistan, and then it'd be uh, Nepal and Tibet. And that India is where, wonderful country, where chapatis were invented and what's happened and it's happened all over the world is that as people have moved from country to country they've moved to different countries to live they have taken their recipes and their food with them and that's how we've got chapatis in this country there are lots of people who will make them and eat them at home you'll go into the supermarkets and if you start looking you'll find chapatis ready made on the shelves for you which are great but not as good as your homemade ones. Right, you now know where chapatis have come from. It's time to get cooking. I'm going to set up here, ready to cook the chapatis and of course to eat them. I'll see you in a moment. Okay, I am back and I've made my chapatis in different sizes as you can see. And I've got my cooker and I've got my frying pan and you don't need anything else okay so you don't need any oil or any um, butter or fat in this pan because we're going to do what we call dry roasting any pan will do this is a chapati pan it's very flat but any frying pan will do and what we're going to do is we're just going to put the heat on remember children this is a job for your grown-ups you can help but please help your grown-ups to keep you safe by doing what they ask you to do so follow their instructions. We want everyone to have fun, but to be safe. So I'll just turn this on, I've lighted. There we go. About medium heat, you can adjust it. We're going to let that pan heat up a little bit. And all we do is when the pan gets a bit hotter, is we take our chapati, as it is, and we literally just plop it in the pan. Now my chapati is a very small, so I can do more than one at a time. But if you're doing a normal size chapati, which is about this big, you'd obviously do 
one at a time. So I've done two chapatis in there and it's amazing because of the flour they don't stick. So basically they won't stick to your pan. You don't need anything other than the pan. And if we watch them carefully, we might notice some little bubbles starting to come up on the surface. It doesn't always happen, happen, but it does sometimes. So here they are in the pan and they're beginning to cook. And we just let them cook. It is that simple. And some people say to me, because obviously we've just seen they come from India and they're meant to be eaten with curries. So I do have some curry here. All right. It's not one of my made homemade curries, this one. This is a curry that I bought from the shop and it's great. In shops, you can buy curry now really easily. But if you're not too sure about curry, then you can do other things, all right? Oh, now, can you see they're just turning up at the corners? All right. And I'm going to turn it over like that and get the other side cooked. Um, if grown-ups children you're not sure about how to make curry or there's none that you can get hold of at the moment don't worry because in my last school there were some parents who came up with some really good other ideas of what to do with chapatis and what they would do is one of the mums sprinkled cheese on one side with a few bits of tomato and avocado and things and then rolled them up to make like a hot chapati sandwich roll and that was a really nice thing to do so I'm going to have one of each. I'm going to have one ordinary one. I'm going to have one with my curry. So here we go. We're just letting them cook through. And what will happen is that they will go slightly browned. They'll get little brown bumps. And if you look very carefully, I'm hoping you can see. Can you see they're just beginning to get little bubbles on? They're not quite flat any longer. Can you see that? Bit difficult to see. Oh, this one's beginning to puff up. Now, I said they didn't rise. They, they rise because they've got a bit of air in them very, very briefly, and then they go down. And my lovely, lovely friend, Sarita, used to say that where she came from, they used to say, the more it rose up, the more in love you were. <laughs> and it's rising up a little bit more now. Okay. And if you look, it's got little brown patches on. Oh, the other one's rising up as well. This means that they're just about done. Here's me calling them a flatbread. They are a flatbread. I promise you they're a flatbread. They only rise up for a very short period of time. That means they're done. So I'm turning the heat off. As soon as the heat goes off, they'll go flat again. Or well, they should do. Oh, Miss Ray. <laughs> After calling them a flatbread, they're <laughs> rising up. Let's just move them over there. They do actually flatten down after a while. So one of my mums at school, as I said, I'm just going to put a hole in this one. There we go. What she used to do was, she used to get some cheese, she used to put some cheese on the top, like that, okay, and she used to let it get a little bit melty, she used to put a couple of pieces of tomato on as well, and then she would roll it up, so let's just take it out of there, it is a bit hot so I'm being careful, and move that one round, she would then roll it up, into a little roll like that and it was like a little cheese sandwich i'm gonna have a little go i love this because in actual fact although it's not what chapatis are for it makes a really nice hot cheese sandwich mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. absolutely lovely a nice rolled up hot cheese chapati sandwich cheese and tomato that one lovely way of doing it Traditionally, I would have curry, and this is what I normally do with my chapatis. I'd have my chapati here, take it off. Again, can you see it's gone a bit brown? Yeah, it's got some brown patches on it. Yeah, and it's bubbled up a bit. It's now going flatter. There you see, it's gone flat again. Flat as a pancake. And traditionally, you tear off a bit of your chapati. Oh, it's a bit warm, this one, because it's literally straight off the stove. And you use your chapati to pick up your curry like that. And then, mm, 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 pop it in your mouth. And when I was traveling in India, 
and we ate chapatis a lot. It was absolutely fantastic. You didn't need a knife and a fork. All you needed was clean hands and your chapati, and you could eat just about anything. A great, great way of eating your food. This way is just having a bit of a... Oh, there we go. I've got some more. Mmm, absolutely amazing. So, two ways with your chapatis. Why not go out and try your chapatis with curry? And why not try making a roly-poly chapati sandwich? Also really good. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope that you found that easy and good fun. And I also hope that it's given you something else to eat. Because I know if it's like my household, you tend to eat the same things over and over again. And it's nice to try different things. And when you go out to different places, you might indeed be offered chapati. I'm hoping that after cooking them yourselves and trying them yourselves, you may next time say, oh yeah, I'll have one of those, thank you. Well, I think I'd better get on and eat my chapatis while they're still hot. And I'll see you another time for more fun. Take care. Bye.